It's Jen Hillman, and today I want to make a video about some ways that you can modify your yoga practice during a pregnancy. So I got a really great email from Jenny, who suggested that I make a video about this exact topic, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. So thanks for the suggestion, Jenny, and this video goes out to you, and to any of my lady friends out there that are pregnant. Congratulations. And this is a good time for you to start thinking about ways that you can adjust your yoga practice to accommodate the changes that are happening in your body. So I'll demonstrate some stretches for you today and just give you some general information. So we'll start out by talking about twists. This is one of the first things that I caution about when a woman is pregnant. You want to be really careful and mindful about the way that you twist through your abdomen. So many times we can do a twist where um, you have your leg crossed over and the instruction would be to twist towards your leg. This helps increase the compression through your abdominals and really helps to wring out your organs and detoxify your blood. But in the event that you're pregnant, you don't want that deep compression through your abdominals. So the best way to modify that twist is to twist your body open, away from your leg. So this way, you still get the twist through your spine, but you keep your belly protected, and there's no compressing that front space. So you twist your body open. And then turn your gaze all the way over your shoulder so you twist all the way through your neck from the very bottom of your spine up through the top of your neck. You twist completely. And you'll be sure and do it on both sides, twisting your body open. Be sure you take some nice deep breaths as you twist. Keep sitting up nice and tall so you create more space in your spine and you're not sinking down and compressing into your belly. You really want to sit up nice and tall as you twist. And another thing to be mindful about is when you are forward folding. So this includes when you're standing or when you're seated. So for this video, I'll just stay seated so you get the idea. When you're early on in your pregnancy, you're not really showing and you still have a pretty good range of motion, then you can reach for your feet or ankles as you forward fold. But my suggestion here is to reach forward with a flat back. So a lot of times when we reach into a forward fold, the tendency is to round your spine forward and naturally that just causes more compression in the front abdominal cavity. So during your pregnancy, it's better to lengthen your spine, reach your heart forward. So you still get that stretch in your hamstrings without compressing into your belly. And then as you get further along and you're showing more and it becomes difficult to come forward, then the modification would be to just separate your legs apart. So essentially your belly would nuzzle down between your legs. But same idea, reach with your spine long. So you lengthen your spine, reaching your body forward and creating space here for your belly to nuzzle between your thighs. So that's some good ways that you can get into stretching into your hamstrings and just modify your forward folds. Now one thing that's really good and beneficial to do during your pregnancy 
is a lot of hip stretching. So naturally, your body is changing a lot, the shape of your pelvis is changing, and it's very common for women, especially that are in their second and third trimester, to experience a lot of tension in your glutes, in your low back, in your hips in general as you start to carry more weight. So stretching into your hips is a really good way to help alleviate the tension that naturally builds up and to also prepare your body for the process of giving birth. So the more open and relaxed your muscles can be, the easier that process will be on your body overall. So you can refer to my video for sciatic stretches for sciatic pain. That video has a lot of really good hip stretching uh, that you can do that's really great for relieving tension in your glutes and in your inner thighs. And for now, I'll show you one really good one is to bring the soles of your feet together and your knees out wide. And even just sitting here and pressing your knees down to the floor, you don't have to lean forward or anything, just reaching your knees down towards the floor is a great way to start stretching into your inner groin and your inner thighs here. Then you can also take this stretch into the back of your hip. Again, make your spine really straight and long. Reach your heart forward to fold. Reaching your heart towards your feet. You can stay right here for a few breaths. Just creating space for your belly so you don't want to crunch your body down, but really lengthen through your spine. So you stretch into your hips and lengthen your spine forward. And by practicing these stretches with your spine straight, it also helps you to build strength in your back muscles and build the strength in your abdominal muscles. So it's also helping you condition your muscles and get stronger. So this is a really good one here. And then another really good hip stretch that you can do is a pigeon pose. So you can set up your pigeon pose by bringing one knee forward towards the front edge of your mat and bring your ankle forward. And then reach your opposite toes really far back behind you and you level out through your hips here. Now this is a fairly advanced stretch. If you're not used to stretching your body, this might not be accessible to you. So you can modify this by bringing your ankle a little bit closer in, if you bend your front knee more, or you can tuck your back toes behind you and lift up a little bit. So you don't have to sit as far down into the stretch, but lifting up will help you build into your strength and will also allow you to get into the hip. Then you just walk your fingertips forward to reach your body forward. And then I'll go ahead and switch legs, stretching into the opposite side. So you set it up the same way. Bring your front knee towards the front edge of your mat. You're eventually going to bring your shin parallel with the front edge of your mat. That's a pretty extreme variation. So if it's easier for you, you can bend your knee more and this will help protect your knee joint and help make it a little easier for your back hip. You level out through your hips, and if you need to modify it even more, you can keep these back toes tucked and lift up a little bit so that you're not as deep in your outer hip. And once you get your foundation set up, walk your fingertips forward, reach your heart forward, so you deepen the stretch into your outer hip. 
you'll find if you're dealing with some sciatic pain or some compression in your low back, this is going to be really helpful to stretch some of that out and loosen up some of that tension. You'll feel a lot better if you're able to practice these stretches. Just take some nice deep breaths to let your body relax. your way back out of it. So another thing to be aware of is any kind of inversion. So anything that makes you go upside down or brings your feet above your heart. So as you get further along in your pregnancy, things like handstands, headstands, or a shoulder stand become a little bit more dangerous for several reasons. One, if you're balancing doing a handstand or a headstand, it's a little dangerous because if you fall out of the pose, you really don't want to fall and hurt yourself. So obviously there's some precaution to take there. Also, if you're going into a shoulder stand, then the further along you are, especially when you're into your third trimester, the weight of the baby will drop down and start to compress your diaphragm and make it really difficult to breathe and difficult to circulate the blood. So it's really a better idea if you want to do any kind of inversions, bringing your feet above your heart. My recommendation is to just do what's called legs up the wall. So basically, you just come lying onto your back and extend your feet straight up as if you were leaning your legs up against a wall. And you can actually go up to a wall, work your hips up to the wall, then extend your feet straight up. And that's a really nice supported way to do this stretch. And inversions are really good for you because all the fluids, blood, and uh, any other waste fluid that get pooled at your feet get to reverse the flow of gravity and move everything back down towards your lymph nodes where they get filtered and cleaned, moving everything back to your heart where it can be circulated and filled with fresh oxygen. So inversions are a really good thing to practice even if you're not pregnant. And if you are pregnant, this is a really great variation. And I'll also mention for women on your menstrual cycle, it's also recommended not to do too much of an inversion practice, but this is a really safe inversion that you can do while you're on your men menstrual cycle. So this is another good time to practice legs up the wall. And if you're not using a wall to support you, then you're using a little bit more abdominal strength to help keep your legs lifted. So it's just another gentle way to build into your core strength. So the last thing I'll mention here is that during your pregnancy, it's really important that you don't engage in doing any poses that have you lying on your belly. This may seem obvious, but it's really important to remember. So anything like uh, doing a cobra pose or doing a bow pose or anything that's putting pressure onto your abdominals, lying on your belly, is really not a good idea while you're pregnant. So you could probably get away with it during your first trimester, but especially as you get into your second and third trimester and the baby is developing more and more, it's really gonna be best if you just avoid any poses that have you on your belly. So if you are in a group class where an instructor is instructing the group to do some of these belly down poses, 
then, you know, you just let your instructor know, hey, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I probably won't be doing the, a lot of those things. And then you just sit it out and avoid those poses during class and then just join the class when they've moved on. So I hope that this information has been helpful to you and I hope that you have a very happy and healthy pregnancy and this information can be a good way for you to stay really healthy and active and stay strong in your body and work through the tension that naturally builds up as a result of being pregnant. So. I know there's a lot of changes that happen in your body, so hopefully these stretches and your yoga practice in general will help you to stay in really good shape and have, help you to be a help, healthy and happy mama. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and thumbs up this video so you can come back and watch it and share it with your friends. And leave me a comment. Let me know how you're doing and how this has been helpful to you. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a wonderful day.